how much of these um, fit into, say, your corporate social responsibility strategies? And are the corporate social responsibility strategies the same as the sustainability strategies? So that you're ticking off your corporate boxes. So there's an overarching aim in your, in your companies. Uh, well, in Kiri, it wasn't part of our CSR agenda. It was part of our contract um, agenda. So we, 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 were, we were lucky, actually, in, in, in Surrey that we, um, it's a bit boring sort of techie stuff, but we, we, were, we were operating under a, what's called a TPC, so a term partnering contract and not an NEC contract. And one of the things that, that, that's specifically about that, it has a thing called a partnering timetable where you can, you can set targets and milestones for strategic projects for, to develop the contract over a period of time. And so developing these skills and some of the social value stuff was part of that agenda. So for our client, for Surrey, these projects are very important. So employing local labour, developing skills within Surrey is very important for them. Um, and very often, the, the problem with our industry, and I'll, I'll be candid, is that some of these, some of these, the, these things that you put into a quality submission, and then you sort of like dust off maybe towards the end because no one does it because everyone's focusing on the day job about delivering the, the things that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas the partnering timetable allows you to actually hold our hold us to account on these strategic projects. And so for us, that was that was a, a, a big incentive. However, now. The, the S skills and the, the, that, that, that form of initiative is now part of the way we do things and it does become part of our CSR agenda. So the initiative has been taken up and everyone's come down to visit. So cohort two, we've had the world come down to visit us in Brooklands um, and now everyone's keen to, to do it and it's now a part of our bid. So now it becomes within our DNA and one of the ways that we, we do things. I think I think for us it was part of the initial agenda. I wasn't there when when the project first started, um, and I do I am aware that I think we were six months into the project when we um, joined the National Skills Initiative. But it's the actual success of what we've been able to show that can be done through having that specific person on site that then incorporates the people and and you know the skills, the skills advantage you know. Uh, which has been taken forward and now used in bids, etc. So I would absolutely echo yeah. that. So one of the one of the things, learning points we've had is that after we we launched and did the pilot and did cohort one, is we we actually uh, invested in employing an education and skills coordinator on the contract to now to to, to run it as as, as business as usual. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. What were the sort of the sort of two main challenges for each of the initiatives where? where you know maybe it was something really unexpected or um something arose where you think oh my goodness i'm not quite sure what we're gonna or how we're gonna deal with that one of the really interesting um aspects of uh the work that david and i have been doing is um and one of the challenges when we first got together is i, I said we only wanted a two-week lead-in before we identify our cohort and that's because their lives are so chaotic of the target group we're talking about Actually, if you spoke to them a month before or six weeks before, their lives would be in a completely different place. So, uh, so one of the challenges is accepting you're only going to know who's coming at the very last minute. And then a very specific challenge we had was um, we had a young man on the autistic spectrum who'd been accused of a sexual offence. Um, there was felt on all sides that this wasn't going to progress because it, it, it wasn't um, as it first appeared but it did mean that we had him on the program uh, under one-to-one -one supervision, so he wasn't able to go anywhere without being supervised. And we had to manage that so that he wasn't identified as being different to anybody else in the group. Um, and we were able to do that. No one was any the wiser. And his life was radically altered by that occurrence. A, because people continued to show faith in him, uh, and he was subsequently, there, there were no charges brought. But um, it was a really interesting time where we were negotiating around what level of supervision we could do while still, you know, pursue the benefits for, for all. I get. I guess for, with us, um, there was the challenge of try not to get involved in too much. You do have to learn to say no. You can't literally do anything. But I think from the start, it was challenging to get the buy-in from the rest of the project. Um, there's obviously those that kind of perceive the concept of 
what we do through the skills as the fluffy stuff um, and, and, and it is hard work and it is it is very challenging to, to kind of get people to think outside the box and think about a career in strong construction it's not just digging the hole there's the other concepts that go around with it as well and and getting the buy-in of the supply chain the other levels within the business to, to trust you and believe in you and have the confidence to, to run with these because it is time consuming and it is you know there's a monetary value around that as well that you do have to, to drive forward and thankfully you know we succeeded we, we got the hundred percent each year but it wasn't until you start hitting those things and people start recognizing what you're doing that you get that buy-in now that we have obviously it's flying but that was initially quite challenging yeah well f i think for, for me the main challenge we had was about that stakeholder engagement with with the Surrey County Council, I think Kia mentioned it earlier, but um, if you think that if you engage with local local authority highways, if you think their departments are complicated, then you have seen nothing compared to the complication when you start to get involved in children's services and adult social care and special educational need provision. So, and it's a it's a crazy world. And so, so we we sat in a in a, I was on about ten different committees for about three months, just getting I suppose the trust of the people who look after those vulnerable cohorts. So um, a lot of the, 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 the adult social care provision and the people who look after that, um, since the, the, the baby P um, incident, are incredibly risk averse. So they, they have to trust you to, to, to let you look after their vulnerable people. So for me, that building that trust, building that relationships with, with the people who look after those the most vulnerable people in our society was the, was the biggest challenge and that's why it took us so long to get from um, um, drawing some circles and models on a, on a wall um, right the way through to actually launching launching the project. Given, given the initiatives and given the um, people coming through on the initiatives um, how can we use that a bit more to actually try and change the image of, of our industry which still is seen as very long hours, dirty, dangerous pot potentially, and still seen as, as very dominant, dominated by white men. So how, how can we, there's a huge opportunity, but how can we get this over? Because actually we all know that we want to change the image, but it's taken a hell of a long time to actually get any traction on this. Part of what we do and part of what we concentrate when we go out to schools especially is the myth busting side of it and breaking down the barrier and ensuring that people know that it isn't just a job for the boys. The salaries that are included or what you can get paid in the industry is a lot higher than people expect it to be. Um, the, you know, the, the cultural side of it as well. Um, I think the, the way that is utilising information like this but it, but getting it out there more, communi communicating it further. I think people need to be more aware that what's going on, more aware of the, the differences in the industry now um, and breaking down those, ba those barriers and those myths in order to ensure that people are aware of really what's going on. I, th I think for, for me, it's about diversity in the workplace and the chain, the cultural shift. I think in, in some of the, the, in your presentation, I was really impressed with, and I think it was, it was almost um, sort of dragging the industry into that, that discussions about about diversity and inclusion through exposure to it. So the the um, the Sophie Tuesday is a great idea, and and certainly we've had the same experience. So one of the apprentices who we have recruited is a guy called Freddie, who um, he is uh, he's uh, a high functioning autism um, on the ADHD and uh, with attention deficit disorder, and he has a range of challenges. But is the difference in focusing on what their ability and not the disability. So focus on what you can do, not what you can't Definitely. do. Definitely. And, and, and for us, that, that made a, a significant difference the way we're approaching our recruitment. So rather than having a role where we're saying we need three operatives and they need to have these specification, they, these are the necessary things they must have, thinking slightly differently and thinking about why, have they got the right attitude, have they got the right approach, and then thinking what they might be able to do for us. Because we need the whole range of skills from right away from planning, programming right the way through to guys on on, on, on the ground so um, so for me that's the big cultural shift um, I, th I think I'd um, go with Rebecca's points from her presentation is is around people it's around relationships and it's around growing things so actually some of it is around the values and attitude you bring to your organization at the start <coughs> and then you grow that 
into um, a relationship with the community. And then that, that, that gives you the rewards.